y'all doing? We're finally back with the Whitey Jenkins Show. We've been away for a while, but now we're here with the first episode of what Smokey's calling Season 2 of the all-new Whitey Jenkins Show. As you can see, he's made a new cheesy intro with that goofy sounding song, and I'm guessing him and the new co-host have co-conspired on making my show a little cheesier than it was but Smokey said since all this new fancy Dan production shit they've been doing over there on that cheap heat show has been working he wanted to implement it on here too so here we are so without further ado let's bring on the man who's now my co-host Upbeat Xanders apparently how you, how you doing there Xanders? Buddy Jenkins how's it going how are you doing tonight? I was told by Smokey that I was going to just be, like, producing, and then he threw the co-hosting on here because he, he kind of saw that you might need a little bit of coasting into this position. But mainly I'm here to kind of help produce the show a little bit more. Smokey thinks that my new attitude's positive. I think it's a good thing for the whole show. I'm glad you agreed to it, Waddy. This is great. Well, I mean, Smokey kind of strong-armed me into it. It wasn't nearly that I agreed to it. It was just... Hey. He said that we had a contract that we had he, we had gone too long without putting on shows and we had to start putting them on. And cool. he said that I got a good idea. I'm gonna bring Sanders on the show to bring some positivity. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, are you talking about all this garbage he's putting on the damn Twitters and Facebooks and all this? What is all that nonsense? What do you? I mean, so what's... I mean, I'm happy you're not blocked. I've had Twitter still got Twitter. Elon Musk hasn't kicked you out of it yet, but you know. Uh, we, is that, I have is been that doing... a cologne? <laughs> he, no, he is one of the richest men in the world. Anyways, Wadi, I'm sorry. We're going to get off track and not talk about things that we should talk about. So, yeah, I've been trying to have a better mindset about doing more like Twitter updates and kind of being more um, out there, open for everyone to kind of jump on the Zan wagon. So, but... Like, I'm posting a whole lot, and I see that, like, Smokey came to me, and he was like well, we've got to get him a little bit better of a mindset. And as soon as he said mindset, I was just like, me and Smokey get each other. This is where the good content is going to come from. So, Wadi, I'm here to kind of keep you in a great mindset. So whenever you feel like, oh, I don't want to do these shows because they're just difficult and I don't have the help I need, I got you. I'm right here for you, Wadi. Thanks. You're welcome. This is going to be great. Yeah. Hey. Hey, I even talked to Smokey. There's some, like, we've even got segments. We've got segments on the Wadi Jenkins show. It's not just you shooting from the hip anymore. I think that, I think it's a whole different thing. I think this is going to be, like, a positive thing instead of so sad and I mean, upbeat. I oh. got – Smokey texted me a floor mat. Yeah. Well, we're, first we're I said, that I thought often. he said he was sending me a floor mat for my well, truck. You, but it, that's then it, not what I got you, a text message. Do you need one? So the first, yeah, I really do, because my okay, we'll there's, talk a hole, to, there's a hole down there, and my foot, the heel of my boot keeps going through. The, we'll talk it. to the money man, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Okay. So the first segment he's got listed here, okay, is are we? Is this okay? Here we go. Uh, well, sorry, I didn't know if there was music. I didn't know if there was music with that. The, the best uh, worst thing of the week. So this is of all the of all the yeah. terrible things that's happened this week. This is the best one right here. So okay. this is a news story and by the way folks not everything we do on here moving forward is going to be wrestling related there's going to be plenty of wrestling stuff on here don't worry but right here we got a story <laughs> come on smoky what the hell's happening there we go it is a florida man was arrested after stealing a crossbow by trying to stuff it down the front of his trousers now what do you think about that i mean I don't know where else he was going to put it. I feel bad for poor Smokey right now. He's absolutely, I didn't know he was, I guess maybe this is where I should be a better producer and kind of help the show. But, uh, I mean, that, that's unfortunate for him. I, I don't, he, he had a. I mean, would you, idea. Stick a, would you stick a crossbow down in front I of would, your britches? Well, I would never, A, I would never steal. I would well, never obviously. steal anything like that. And, like, the whole thing with, like, this violence, especially with weaponry, I don't understand it. So it's not something like it, it would be something like if I was going to have to steal bread to give to like some poor person on the outside, how I would do it is definitely not stick it there. 
Like you've got to find. Oh, you wouldn't want to stick bread down there if he's giving it to some poor person. Well, I mean, they wouldn't. I mean, they wouldn't appreciate but, it. But just uh, then, no. Why Where would, I mean, would you would, stick? To, well, let's just all right. We've, we've established Thank you won't you. shove it down in front of your britches. Where fine. would you stuff bread if he's going to steal it for a poor person, such as uh, myself? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, you're not a poor. I want to know where this is coming from before you bring me bread with my. Well, I mean, hat. it would. It would definitely not be about my down my trousers, as they said. It would have to be probably it on the sleeve, maybe just like right up the armpit area, so you can kind of keep it. You've got to be able to. You've got to have a nice tight shirt, and then you take the the bread loop thing, and then you put it down there, and then up in here, so you can just kind of walk side on. That All right. Long, long that, as you didn't just finish wrestling a long match in a chicken suit or something, I guess. Well, <laughs> no one would ever do that. So now you mentioned violence. Yeah. Well, this that brings us to our okay. next story. This is the. Come on, wow. Smokey. What is happening? You are you, Smokey's doing an excellent job, by the way. Smokey. Let's see, he kept it up there again. It's been up there. The worst, <laughs> worst thing of the week, which this is like the first thing, but just worse. But. Okay. Are you seeing it and I'm not? Because yes, mean, you will. I am seeing it. I, if I have to, I guess it's just on your end, Waddy. You've got to get off stealing other people's internet Wi-Fi. Well, they need to get better internet. Is what they need to do. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so you're so, seeing something right now? Yeah, the, I'm seeing the restaurant worker arrested I don't see after. It. Okay, well, do you want me to read the, at least the headline so you can read go the headline that? here? All right, restaurant worker arrest after grease thrown on customer. So my understanding is I, I heard I heard this story on the radio one morning. Okay. Damn Arby's manager in Hueytown, which ain't that okay. far from Alabama over here where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Got into an altercation over service in the drive through window of the of the Arby's and they flung hot grease on his customer through the drive through window at the Arby's, which I ain't no expert on this positivity <laughs> business, but I'm positive that's that's not appropriate. Well, I their effort was upbeat, though. Let's just say that. How about that? There, I've I've worked the fast food restaurant industry, and before I was upbeat, now I, there is no way. But um. Oh yeah, you could. I mean, can't nobody stay upbeat working in a fast food yeah. restaurant? I hate to I hate to actually be the store. the sad sack in this situation, but I actually agree with you. <laughs> there is no way. So I get it. Um, yeah, good for those people. <laughs> I guess it could have been worse somehow. I just, I mean, the fact it was the manager is what surprised me. If it had been one of these, <laughs> you know, $8 an hour, you know, jobbers, yeah, fair enough. But the damn man, what did you say to the manager to get to I was about to say, grease at you? It, it doesn't, A, it doesn't take much <laughs> because as a manager, you would be, um, I, I remember as a manager, I definitely wasn't upbeat and had a short fuse. So I'm sure I've wanted to do it, but. Never well, there was plenty of hot grease you could have threw at the place she was at too. We won't oh, say man. where it was. They don't sponsor us, so they can they can stay upbeat with themselves somewhere else. <laughs> Whoa, they can go. <laughs> they can go eat. <laughs> can go All right, let's not kill your gimmick. We're only uh, nine minutes uh, into this thing. You're already I'm sorry. off the rails. I didn't know this was an interview. I I, I didn't know this I didn't was an interview. interview. You just okay. we interact. That's what a co-host <laughs> okay. does. We. I'm sorry. I'm it sorry. ain't just was, me sitting here talking about news stories. Why are you sitting? I'm, in the I'm background. being as about as upbeat about these poor situations as I can be. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's something you'll be upbeat about. Uh, there's there's a big wrestling event coming up and i'm just i'm it. just I, i'm upset that i'm not involved with it because this is my kind of thing i think this is going to be a heck of a show i think you're probably going to want to get tickets to it so everybody check this out right now coming next thursday this thursday at noon come out to the butt county kentucky convention center for wrestle, wrestle show four if you are a true wrestling fan, then you definitely need to come out for the biggest night in professional wrestling. Meet and greet with local referees. Buy action figures out of a tote from some dude in the parking lot. Snap a pic with the spare turnbuckle pad from a WWF 1987 house show for $20. Plus, see all of your local favorites in action like the penultimate warrior, the Canadian Nightmare, Renee Riso, Big Dave, The Rock Star, Kevin Miami, Bigger Dave, Rhinestone Cowboy, Brick Dickens, Biggest Dave, 
Keith, and Mr. Charisma Robert Morton. Hey everyone, Mr. Charisma Robert Morton here. Uh, come on down to the Butt County Convention Center this Thursday to see me take on Big Dave in a Fans Bring the Weapons match. Be there. Special note, do not bring guns, knives, katana, swords, brass knuckles, cattle prods, live animals, or children to the Fans Bring the Weapons match. And make sure you get there early for our Wrestle Show 4 meet and greet, including members of the NWO. Except Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, X-Pac, The Giant, Eric Bischoff, Dennis Rodman, Scott Steiner, and more. But you know Horace Hogan will be there. Tickets are $30 a piece through PayPal or three for $100. Bring a replica championship belt and you'll be admitted for free into the live podcast recording of three white dudes discussing diversity in pro wrestling. Order today. Boy, what you think about that, Xanders? Um, they had three other shows. That was, that was the that was the first thing that popped up in my head. I mean, I'm I'm happy they made it through four of these, but I don't I don't I don't know. I, I it's clever. Clearly, old charisma had me wanting to go. What are we going? Are we the wait? Hey, go. Is Scott doing it with us? Is, well, is, I mean, is me and Gene Jackson going? I mean, do you think have you you think Smokey would like pay for us a trip to go to that? Why do you, I would let you if you came in with a good mindset, I'd let you ride with us. Well, I might take you up on that because I mean, I'd kind of like to go meet Horace Hogan. He's only going to be there from one to one fifteen, though, so we got to <laughs> get there early if we're going to get a picture with old Horace. For, I've had I've had to drive a lot further to take a lesser picture with lesser stars. And been there before one o'clock. So there you go. Old Horace Hogan. I'm yeah, excited for it. I'm guessing Noah Tall probably had something to do with that, or Kevin Brandon won, if I had to guess. If it was Kevin Brandon, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> for Moving everything on. I said, so, uh, everything I said, don't so add the me next to segment, According to Smokey here, <laughs> this is going to be a segment we call hashtag wrestling. This is going to be where Ooh. I show an awesome wrestling clip to show okay. everybody and this week we even got a boom look at that look at there wrestling professional exactly how you spell it and so uh so i got a clip i thought it was timely because <laughs> last week uh everybody was sharing that video where damn jackson interviewed that david cox feller right yeah and so in that video which was I, I think was like seven eight years ago when they recorded that. Long time ago. He said that he thought he wasn't gonna wrestle about another four or five years. But I got a video from like last weekend. What? Where he's up there wrestling <laughs> in Tennessee. We're not gonna watch the whole uh, match, please. Obviously, because I mean, Tom, Tom, I'm sure it's a, it's a wrestling clinic. But we're just gonna take a look at a couple of things. I want you to see how how great his selling is here at the end of this clip. Excited. Uh, when he's, he's kind of working like the Undertaker, where they hit him with stuff and he just keeps walking like nothing happened. But check this out <laughs> and uh, enjoy. He's to, he really is hard to beat, man. They was they was whacking him, and uh, didn't phase him. He just kept walking along because he's a tough old son of a bitch. <laughs> whacking him was probably not the best way to say that. Why he just for future reference? Uh, what do you got against yeah. whacking Cox? <laughs> 
that's not um, good, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, you, you obviously listened to the interview that Waddy Jean or that uh, Gene Jackson did for with Tyrese Murphy. So, I don't. Oh I try not to watch anything Gene Jackson does. So. It's tough. It's sometimes I must say I'm, I'm trying to be upbeat about this, but it's, it's who's Tyrese Murphy? It's a pro wrestler from I believe he's from Gadsden. From Gadsden, yeah, Alabama. Yes. A local, he's a rock star, but likes tech on. It's a long story. Just go watch our go. Just go watch our stuff, Waddy. Tonight, go get on YouTube and just watch it. You'll all right. I'll watch. A, I reckon I'll, I'll reckon I'll watch it since you since you asked me to. Thank but, you. You've got uh, you've done a lot of homework tonight, Waddy. I, I really appreciate all the. Well, Smokey's been on my ass all week about this man. stuff. I mean, there must be some big money at stake because he's been on me. <laughs> Something We're trying. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, this is this is super positive. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Now, did you so want me is, to see about getting the Violent Gentleman's booked on that show up in Tennessee? Where the, I seen your buddy Stephen Styles was in that video. Yeah. Oh, did was you he? Have another. That was him swinging the chair. Old David. <laughs> that old, old David didn't didn't even feel it. Um, yeah. Get, all right, we'll get, get back we'll to dis- you off we'll, air. We'll discuss it off air. Yeah, like that's that's not. We don't we don't need to. We don't need to drag this into the butt. No. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Well, right now, Smokey is telling me in my headset, and I'm sure you too, since you're a junior producer or whatever, you're a producer <laughs> in training. You're, yeah. Uh, is that what he's? Is that what's happening here? Is like he's training you to be like the replacement I'm, producer on some of these other podcasts? Is that what's? He's just kind of looking. Is? I hope so because you know I know he I know poor Smokey's worked to the bone. He he works. Twice as hard as anybody else. Well, I mean, is. he's only sleeping like 18 hours a day now. So he's, he's really. <laughs> That's, he's been really, I mean, I know how quick he is on the damn keyboard. So I guess he can do all this editing and stuff in his four hours that he's awake or six Speaking hours that he's awake. Speaking of getting paid, let's go right now Ooh. to our commercial break. And when we come back from the commercial break, we got a new game. I know y'all play games on that cheap heat yeah. deal. Well, we have an actual game, and, and my best friend. Shout out to my best friend, Shane Mako, by the way. Hey, Shane-o. What's Shane up? would love these because you're actually going to be able to determine if you win or lose, even though you're only going to be competing with yourself. But <laughs> it's going to be I real know. clear once it's over whether you won or whether you I lost. have a feeling, knowing you, Waddy Jenkins, I'm going to be losing. So let's go to commercial That's break. not upbeat, man. got to stay positive. <laughs> let's take a commercial <laughs> break, and we'll find out on the other side. Bye, guys. Are you looking to have a good time? Well, head on down to Happy Hour Comedy Club and Restaurant in Aniston, Alabama. Shoot you some pool, play you some darts, or head on over to the bar and get you a cold beer or one of them fancy cocktail drinks. They got all that. You hungry? Get you one of the best pizzas in Aniston or anything else off the menu. They got burgers, tacos, chicken wings, anything you want. Every Thursday night, they got open mic comedy and karaoke. And live comedy every Friday and Saturday night with some of the top comedians from across the United States. Go to happyhourcomedyclub.com for more information and tell them why did you can see you. Hey guys, this is Wolfie D from PG-13. Check out my podcast, Live and in Color with Wolfie D, every Monday at noon. We're talking Memphis, we're talking ECW, WCW, WWF, everywhere that I've been. We even have some great guests, some Hall of Famers on the show with us. Every Monday at noon, Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Do you like barbecue? Well, of course you do, unless you're some kind of weirdo or wasn't raised right. So if you want to get some of the best barbecue around, check out P3 Barbecue. Our buddy David Estes does it up right. He'll be glad to cater to your next event or just send you some of his award-winning sauce right there to your own doorstep. Go over and check them out on the Facebooks at facebook.com slash P3 Barbecue or give old David a call at 901-679-3452 and tell him Whitey Jenkins sent you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Dangerous Dan Colley, the Professor Jimmy Street, and the Plastic Sheik Jared are the undisputed six-man tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this trio does it all, and all they ask is... Give me back my pro wrestling!
every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey. Hey, I thought uh, I thought you and Mako and Jackson was the six man tag team champions of podcasting. Them guys calling y'all out. What's going on there? Oh, they don't want that. They don't want that. I'm I'm gonna be positive and just bow out. They can be whatever they want to be. They can have all their. We've got way better monikers. But you know, this is not about us and GP. I do appreciate how like you've been really talking of GP, and I appreciate all your support, Whitey. Well, it's a lot to us. We, we, Smokey look, said maybe if I mention y'all on my podcast, that maybe y'all will finally mention mine on y'all's. Well, but I've been, I've been kind Ordering. of. This is Xander's of the past. So Xander's of the past kind of was pretty upset with you there, Waddy. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm completely turning you page and just not that guy. But a couple until I had a realization, like you, you kind of got me. Maybe a little upset that you cost me a match in Mississippi, and you know I, I don't know how much. Are we, you still talking about that? T- look, you was up on the top rope, and there yeah. was a wasp on you about to sting you, and I reached up there with my cane to knock it off of you, and I—I mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sorry that you failed no, and lost no, the sorry. match. I didn't—I didn't know. Look, I just want to say this, then, not knowing, I—we've I, got to talk more like this. I'll, I'll give you my phone number in the private chat. You can just call me whenever, or send me a letter, or however you contact people um i got a burner phone okay well you could uh, i'll give you my snapchat i don't know i don't need snapchat i am on tiktok though okay i'll get your TikTok. I know your partners on i don't know if you're on there but i know your damn partners on there uh, i, I don't want go you. there i don't i don't do tiktoks about. maybe i need to start i'll start you probably I'll don't start. Okay. Well, we gotta get we're, we're, we gotta I'm get sorry. this game on the road we're, here no, i'm sorry no I'm offense sorry. i'm just Okay. Hopefully I can see this. Here we go. <laughs> oh, wow! See, I, I can't see it, but you can see it. That's man. That's what a does picture. Anders know? Is that what's up there right now? That's unfortunately what's up there. I don't know what's there, happening on my end. The picture, the poor picture you chose was flattering. I appreciate it. I look very. So what this is going to be? It's going to be a game each week where okay. we're going to see what you know about certain things. So. This week, Ooh. it's what do you know about 80s WWF wrestlers, <laughs> okay? <sighs> Next week, it might be 90s comedians or some shit. Who knows? But anyway. Baseball? Number one. No. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to ask. You know, And, and I'm not knocking you if you lose this game because if you ask me, you know, what does Whitey know about baseball? <laughs> squat. All right. Picture yeah. number one. Who All is right. this? Uh, pass. I have no idea. I don't even want to make a guess at the body. Yes, <laughs> um, Triple H. <laughs> Look how disappointed Scott Morgan was in you. <laughs> he looked like poor Smokey. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, there's there's the first one. That? That's the Bruno guy. San Martino, okay. one of the most famous world guess. champions that of all time. That was my time. second guess. That was my second guess. Triple H. <laughs> he looks like God. it in the face. <laughs> Number two. I would have done these, Rod. Um, um, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> uh, pass. <laughs> Got him. Just guess. Uh, King Kong Bundy. <laughs> You're one and one now. Again. You're never going to see that picture, that correct picture. Yeah, that's a good picture. Shout out to Skinny Chris Hero there. I'm, yeah, I'm sure he's proud we're showing that. <laughs> right now. There's no way if you didn't, if you, if you almost passed on King Kong, God dang, Bundy, <laughs> and guess no Triple H on Bruno. There's no <laughs> way you're going to get this one. We're going to show it anyway. Perfect. <laughs> Polly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, judges. I was pretty that sure is, he did like a sting gimmick earlier. That on is luscious show. Johnny Valiant. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Valiant. Uh, was he close to Paulie at any point? Well, Paulie probably stole yes. his gimmick too. But, all right, this one, you got to get this one. If you don't get this one, we're just shutting the show down. <laughs> Coco Beware. Oh, look at there. <laughs> Oh, 
Waddy, I appreciate you not trying to burn me on all of them. I should have known the Bruno one. Yeah, I want you to know Bruno. I thought this was going to hell in a handbasket. All right, so you're two and two. You got two wrong, two right. Oh, wait, we're going to – this is going to go. Number five is the tiebreaker. Oh, man, this is still – playing this. uh, People don't think this is a work the way it came out, but this is 100% legit, I promise you. But I don't feel good about this being the tiebreaker. Um, Wahoo McDaniel. Judges. It's super unfair. That is Chief J. Strongbow, as mentioned in the Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy. If you remember uh, that's, that one. No, definitely not. You never saw that movie? No. God. And I've even seen Wahoo McDaniel wrestle, but I've just never really paid. Like, I've watched his style and I watched old stuff like that, but not a lot of it. It's not, not my bag. I just knew it was some old Indian, so... <laughs> he had the name Wahoo. <laughs> How racist. Anyway. <laughs> That's not racist. <laughs> so our last segment is a segment called News to Us. So we're gonna, this is where we talk about a different news story each week. Sometimes it'll be wrestling, sometimes it won't. But this week it is because the news story broke this week. That 73-year-old Ric Flair is going to have one last final match this July in Nashville as a part of StarCast Weekend, which is taking place on SummerSlam Weekend, which is also, you know, SummerSlams happen at the damn stadium in Nashville, which is kind of crazy. But So they're having a StarCast that weekend. Ric Flair is going to be in a match. Uh, rumor has it it's going to be like a six-man tag. Uh, it's it's rumored to be Flair and uh, Revival or FTRs, FTR. whatever they are, against the Rock and Roll Express. And Man. everybody was saying uh, Ricky to Ricky to Dragon and Steamboat, but Steamboat came out yesterday and said, "Hell no, I'm not ruining my legacy like that. I want everybody to remember my match I had was with, with uh, Chris Jericho when I was 69 years old at Backlash." So we don't know who the opponent's going to be, but. Xanders, I know you're you're being upbeat, but uh, let's see how upbeat you can be talking about a 73-year-old Ric Flair after having a, nearly dying a couple years back and allegedly having a pacemaker. I don't know if that's true or not, coming back to the ring. I'm, I'm excited for him. That's going to be a, – a, that's hopefully going to be a milestone in his life that he gets closure with. I don't – you know, it's like these old coaches in football. I know you know so much about college football coaches – but they, they say they're going to not do it, and then they do it again. It's the thrill of the environment. It's really tough to retire in this business. Good luck. Good luck, Mr. Flair. I, I mean, he's a legend, obviously. He's what everybody aspires to be. I, I got an idea. Okay. Six-man tag. That's what they said, right? Ric the Flair. Revival. Yeah. The Revivals against the Violent Gentleman. Scott Morgan, Shane Mako, and Upbeat Xanders. What? I I love Rock and Roll Express. They're 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 a great tag team. They paved the way. But man, I've seen some of their stuff, and I'm trying to be upbeat, so I'm not going to talk about how their Canadian destroyers are terrifyingly rough. But you know, get up, get him in there. Get Ric Flair, somebody he doesn't have to do a Canadian destroyer with, ladies and gentlemen. Like, make the right call. We'll, we'll teach him some positivity. So That'll be fine. maybe we can start a a uh, what do you call them when you uh, like the thing I started on Gross Joey petition. Uh, a petition like a petition yeah we start a petition and send it to Conrad Thompson because that's his outfit doing this absolutely. thing absolutely yeah. get the violent gentleman in there against Ric Flair and the FTRs at in Nashville that's so, right. I mean I mean what what a great match that would be I mean you know yeah. and we know we know y'all are willing to. Do the job. I mean, oh. anybody's ever watched EPW or any other? You know, <laughs> what was that thing at the mall? I mean, y'all used to. Yeah, y'all, we y'all, yeah, yeah, y'all spent more time on your back at the mall than the local hookers over here in Gadsden. So, I mean, y'all, you, I'm just saying, y'all would do the right thing. Y'all are willing to do business. That's all. I mean, we, I'm not, not being down. Why do? You, why do you, this is one thing? No, no, it's okay. I understand. This is everything's positive. That's the big thing about positivity. Like. Once you get in that mindset, it's not going to be anything negative. You're not going to have the opportunity. Waddy, it's positive that you said that in the atmosphere. I like that. That's a, a petition's a great way to show 
you know, you could be disgusted, like you could be unhappy, but just always be upbeat about it. Be progressive. That way your unhappiness doesn't sit, but just a few seconds. So Wadi, whatever harebrained schemes you could think of to get us a great match and and to retire a legend, go for it, buddy. I'm all for it. This is great. I mean, if, if, if we can't get in on the Nashville deal, I mean, you think Dirty could get him down there to, to OWOs or something? Or I'm sure Dirty would probably do that for the Violet Gentleman because Dirty's a stand-up man and has, with Gene, like, it that ensures Gene Jackson is going to be there it's because Gene Jackson is their longest champion, longest running champion ever. He's a legend over there in Mississippi. Now, I mean, so, I'm pretty sure they're going to have to stick him in their Hall of Fame this this year in the, at the anniversary show. I, I want to have a good honestly. I'm, this is the, my new positivity is kind of not allowing me to do a lot of my grievances that I kind of, I'm upset about, but like I'm trying to, because I'm trying to push past them. I'm trying to get past them, Waddy. And like, I just, the, how are we not in more Hall of Fames? Because Gene's done so much for the business. And I feel like, you know, my positivity alone just recently has done enough for me to be in at least two or three Hall of Fames. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, Lord knows if there's an outlaw wrestling Hall of Fame, I better be the first one in it. You know, you I, I, mean, great, it I mean, you might have put right. Mickey Henry in there first, but I should it's, come right after It's, him, it's a toss you know? up, Waddy. It's, it's such a, I get it, Mickey Henry's a legend, but like the just being in Mississippi, the, by the stories I heard about you, Waddy, it's crazy. It's crazy some of the stuff you were able to pull off. You were able to pull off 500 people in a barn. Like, that's crazy, buddy. I'm proud of you. Like, I think I'm here to promote you. I, I, I don't want us to seem at odds because that's that's not that's not positive. I want to be friends here, Waddy. If I could, if I could, like, fist bump you right here. God, that'd be so cool. Come on, Waddy. Come on, Waddy. Oh, dude. I see. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got Waddy Jiggis fist bumping me over here. I'm excited about this. Hey, that's like that pose everybody does on the nah, I, pictures. <laughs> I, I, that's that's positively. See, I bad. didn't know you could do a fist bump through the crazy, whatever this it? is we're on here. That's technology, pretty, yeah. Pretty this is fancy, technology. Dan. Technology. <laughs> All right. Well, before we go, take a look at this. Ooh. All my social media and such. You can get on whiteyjenkins.com. Of course, I share a YouTube with this gentleman here and all the other violent gentlemen at youtube.com slash cheap heat TVs. On Twitter, at the twitter.com slash Whitey Jenkins. And then Facebook is facebook.com Whitey Jenkins Comedy. Same as in, same for Instagram. And since Xanders is here, let's go ahead and plug the old yeah, every cheap bit heat of social media is there. They got Instagram, they got Facebook, Twitter. And of course, YouTube. We're all on the yeah. YouTube there. So, uh, and we're on here right now, as a matter of fact. Hey, and one more thing before we go: if you want to bring the Whitey Jenkins Outlaw Wrestling Academy seminar to mm. your show, or if you want to come to my wrestling school as soon as I find somewhere to have it, uh, it's only nine hundred dollars cash money. And look at all the stuff you you learn, all of that, and much more. So it's a lot. That's gigging something, gigging something. A lot of people need to get. I yeah, think need to work on that. Blood is not exactly the most positive thing, Waddy. So we'll, well, we'll, it's, it's we'll teach. Oh, we could teach him how to use that fake blood. Have you seen that fake blood stuff, Waddy? Oh, we've been doing really good, man. Don't don't That's get me sideways right here at the end talking about That's fake blood. All right, I'm, we're not. Come on, we're better than that. You think you gonna, you think you're gonna get in the ring with Ric Flair in Nashville using fake blood? I mean, he's gonna use real blood, and I'm gonna be. Hell yeah, it's terrifying. Ric Flair, man. Ric Flair will, will get busted open during intermission, taking pictures with folks. Selling gimmicks. Okay? Yeah. And it ain't gonna yeah. be fake blood, by God. <laughs> I would just suggest. Well, folks, that I'm, I'm sorry. That's it for the uh, the first episode of the new season of the new Whitey Jenkins show. I want to thank my co-host, Upbeat Xanders. Hey. You know, I came into this thinking that I wasn't going to buy into all this positivity stuff. I don't know. You're making some sense. Hop on the board, Whitey. Hop on. You know what, what you're going to hop the on the board of? Wagon? Oh, the Zand wagon. Hop on board. We're going to go for a ride. Uh, I'm not completely oh. sold, but, you know, you got next week to sell me on it. And speaking of next week, we're gonna play another game. I think you're gonna like this game better than what than you like the old. Uh, yeah. What does Anders know? Although we'll be playing more of that in the future. But next week uh, we're gonna be playing a little game called 
Oh, porn no. star or wrestler. And what that is, I'm going to read off some names, and then you got to tell me whether they're either a porn star or a wrestler. And let me tell you, it's a lot harder than you think it's going to be, all right? <laughs> no, no pictures? No pictures? No pictures, anything? just names. Wow. Well, even that, might, even that would probably be questionable, but right now we're just doing names. And then if that's yeah. too hard, then maybe we'll have to include pictures. But even then... I don't know that that would make it easier. Just to be Waddy, I, I'm, I'm petrified of how prepared you are. Uh, Waddy Jenkins, who is prepared, uh, will work on the sober thing, but preparation is a big part of positivity. Like, that's, that's basically right. the same word. So, good job, Waddy. I'm proud of you today. Next week. Thank you. Like I say, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, Smokey, the producer, hounding me, but hey, whatever gets it done, right? It's pride. All right. Well, we went a little over on time, but I think we had a pretty good show. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll see you here next week for another edition of The Whitey Jenkins Show with Upbeat Zanders. Mm -hmm.